Hello, Sugar Free Sisters, 40 Free Sisters, and those of you who are journeying with us through the 40 Day Sugar Fest by Wendy Speak. Um, we are in day seven of this fasting and feasting journey, and um, I'm here with the inspirational post for today, day seven, a holy hunger is what uh, our devotional was on and we were in Matthew chapter 5 verse 6 that's what we've been feeding off of today um, and I'm reading it from the amplified version of the Bible it reads blessed joyful nourished by God's goodness are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness those who actively seek right standing with God for they will be completely satisfied um, as I was journeying through today and sitting with this, the word and sitting with, um, what was shared in the devotional, I kept, uh, going to a line here she, uh, that Wendy wrote. She says, I had to go through this 40 day sugar fast three times. That's 120 days without sugar before I began to understand my problem. Here's what she said her problem was. My issue isn't actually with sugar or with food, but with hunger. Uh, misplaced, insatiable hunger is what she said. And I, I sit with that for a minute. First off, I sit with it thinking about her going through this this journey um three times this will, will be my second time going through the journey um and she said it took her three times of going through this to realize that it wasn't really even about sugar it wasn't even really about food but the aha moment was it's about hunger and the how i misplaced hunger she says misplaced insatiable hunger and i started thinking about um hunger and, and where you know what does misplaced hunger look like i started thinking about appetite hunger and appetite and i'm like is there a difference between a hung hunger and appetite um they're very closely related um, hunger, I know, is natural. It's something that's natural. We get hungry. Um, our appetite, though, it deals with uh, our desire. What is it that I desire? Um, and most of the time, our appetite will drive our hunger. That which I desire um, will drive what I'm hungry for. And so, for me... Um, as I kept looking at that, I started thinking about how we have an enemy and the enemy hates us. She told us this a couple of days ago and how the enemy wants to pervert anything that we're connected to, even our hunger. So um, he's always looking to just pervert our hunger, the thing that's natural to us. He wants to pervert it. Like there's nothing wrong with eating. You know, we, we eat to survive. The problem becomes, the problem comes when the enemy perverts it and he, he does things to turn hunger into gluttony. You know, um, there's nothing wrong with having a little sugar, a little sweet here or there. The problem is when the enemy comes in and perverts it and, and takes it over takes you over and it's like it he makes it an addiction if it makes sense to you um but i just thought about that and then i started giving thought to um i thought about what's gonna happen for me at day 41 what's gonna happen for you at day 41 day 51 day 100 after we've completed this this fast and this time of fasting and feasting what's going to happen is it on november the first we're gonna be like yay we're off and every sugar that we stayed away from for these 40 days are we gonna run back to it and go right back to our old habits and our old ways um 
we're talking about a holy hunger and that you know we've been saying it over and over that this is more than just about sugar you have not been led here simply because oh i need to stop sugar sugar was sugar was was the avenue of by way of holy spirit leading you here but if he's led us here he's led us to something greater and not having us to to walk through 40 days of being without something to only on day 41 and day 51 and day 100 to go right back into old habits i don't want to i wrote this in my journal i don't want to just get through this i want to grow through this i want my appetite to be dealt with changed to where i hunger for for holy and healthy i want i want my appetite to be dealt with my desire to be dealt with um i don't want to just get through this i don't want to just say hey i did a 40 day sugar fast and oh i felt i feel good and somebody sees me or or even me just living with me um that on day 45 i'm back to the same addiction and nothing has changed i don't want to just get through this marking off the days on the calendar to say hurry up and i can't wait until i get to day 41 so i can do whatever i want i know i want to grow through this otherwise this is a waste of time this is a waste of time i don't hit myself in the face this is a waste of time if if that's the that's the sole purpose no i want to grow through it and i want my appetite to be dealt with change to where I hunger for holy and healthy, holy and healthy in everything, holy and healthy relationships, holy and healthy relationship with food, holy and healthy um, in my home, holy and healthy in my body, holy and healthy in my mind, holy and healthy everything. And so a lifestyle, I want this to become a lifestyle of craving God and loving God more than anything. I want to I want to as I'm growing through this journey, I want to forsake the false fillers. Everything that I ran to ran to to fill me. I want to forsake all false fillers. And I want to I want my desire to be on the one true and living God. Like he is who I run to first. He is who, he's first. He's priority in everything and in every area of my life. Um, one of the things that Wendy shared in here that stood out for me was um, she was sharing that she has some friends who, um, what did she say? She has some friends who model this uh, hungry and h hungry holy life and um she was sharing that you know they got busy schedules they got kids but one thing that they do is they prioritize the father that they take the time to uh spend with him and sit with him each morning and um that's one of the things i i, I hear a lot of people say this all the time um i just gotta make the time and i I always that never just it never sets well in my spirit and one day I just was like why when I hear that Holy Spirit I'm just like ah frustrated like make the time he was like because nobody makes time God makes time in a span of a day there's 24 hours no more no less in 20 it's 24 hours in a day he was like if if people could make time they would Nobody makes time. You have to take the time. You have to take the time. You have to choose to take the time. Every time that I say that I'm making time, I find out that I never do whatever it is that I'm saying that I'm going to do because the, the end result is I can't make time. I got to take the time. I got to take an hour. I got to take two hours. I got to take the 15 minutes. I got to take the time. And so she she brought that out and she said one of the things that one of her friends told her is that she started doing um, in her 
uh, for the majority of her adult life. And that thing registered with me because I said that's that's what I'm going to start doing from now on, from this day forward. I didn't catch this the first time I went through this journey. But now that I caught it, I'm, I'm making that a part of me too. Her friend told her that she prays Matthew 5 and 6. Talk about praying the word. She prays Matthew 5 and 6. And so I wrote that out. And I'm encouraging you, you too, sis, that as you're going through this journey, um, that you begin to pray Matthew 5 and 6 over you every day, every day. It's, it's just a sentence. It's just a sentence, but it's a powerful life transforming sentence when you pray it from a sincere place in your heart. And, and her friend says she prays every day, Lord, help me to hunger and thirst for your righteousness more than anything else. Lord, help me to hunger and thirst for your righteousness more than anything else. That's going to become my prayer. And that's, uh, I challenge you. I challenge you. I invite you. I don't challenge you. I invite you, sis, you, sis to make that a part of your daily prayer. And see, see what happens as you pray it from a sincere place. And find yourself being obedient and going with God as he's leading you to hunger and thirst for righteousness. She said that when we grow in our devotion to him, we grow in our hunger for him and his righteousness. And I thought about that even for a bit. And I, I, I reflected back to water. And I can remember a time when I just... Water wasn't my thing. It wasn't my drink of choice. I wasn't going to go choose that first. I really didn't like it. I'm just like, it's water. I, I'd rather drink something else. I'd grab a soda. I'd grab, uh, I'd grab something that I know I shouldn't have had over the water. But one thing that I'm noticing and I've noticed over the years is that the more I drank the water, even when I didn't want it, the more I crave it now. The more I crave the water now. And, and I liken that to devotional time. So you don't all we're not gonna always feel like um getting up and spending time with God and feasting on his word, putting his word into practice in private continually. Um, we're not gonna always feel like it, but discipline when we discipline ourselves to do it anyway, when we give discipline a say over don't want to, when we give discipline a say over I don't feel like it, discipline will begin to develop a devotion in you. Um, and and it, it'll it become a desire, a desire. The more you do it, the more you discipline yourself, even when you don't want to, the more you let discipline speak up over, I don't want to, um, it becomes a desire. And so that's all I got to share today. Our journal prompt, our journal prompt for those who want to go deeper. We are a week into this journey. I want us to take some time today to really assess our appetite to really assess our appetite are we or you it's because it's going to be personal because it's in your own private time are you just fasting and looking forward to finishing like you fasting you going through the days but you really looking forward to getting to the end so you can be done with this and finishing or are you really feasting and being filled and, and when you Take the time to ask the question and then honestly um, answer it. Honestly answer it. Make the adjustments. If if you're still just, just fasting to say I'm doing this to get through it and yeah, check off. I had to I had to pull myself back today. I was rushing through the devotional, rushing to to get old, to get something down to come and record a video. And I was like, if I don't have nothing to say, if I don't have a, a video to post, I don't want this to become something that I'm just doing to get on here and post and to share. I, I want to be transformed. I want to be transformed. So I had to slow down, 
rewind it back, not give thought to even recording a video at all and sit with this word and feast, feast, feast on it. I have to be honest with myself. Are you really, are you really, are you just fasting and want to just finish or are you really feasting and being filled? because it's in the feasting and being filled that we're gonna witness this spiritual transformation. This is a physical detox. That's what this says, where physical detox meets spiritual transformation. The physical detox is me doing without the sugar, but, I'm, but it's really to be spiritually transformed. So ask that question, really assess your appetite. And if you find that you're, you're still just fasting and ready to finish, Begin to pray, God, in addition to Lord, help me to hunger um, and thirst for you, for you, your righteousness more than anything else. Add on to your prayer, Father, change my appetite. Help me change my appetite in this to where I desire you, to where I desire holy and healthy in everything. I'm going to pray the prayer in this book. Dear Lord, as the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you. For you alone can satisfy thirsty souls and fill hungry hearts with that which is good. Therefore, Lord, I'm asking you to help me with your spirit. Help me to hunger and thirst for your righteousness more than anything else. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Happy day seven. Get hungry, holy hungry.